the white lash behind Minneapolis, Minneapolis's plan to fire white teachers, explain. And this is over here on a, a titillating online rag called the Grio, the Grio, I bet. And the author here, uh, looking like a 1960s Black Panther, Michael Harriet. Harriet, it doesn't sound appropriate for Mr. Harriet. The conservatives at Fox News, writes Harriet, called it discrimination. They just call it discrimination when you have decided that you're going to fire and everybody you're going to fire is going to be white people. It's just in quotes. The neo-confederates, okay, the neo-confederates at the Heritage Foundation, oh my gosh, they were down the street from me. And if he calls them neo-confederates, wow, that you couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, they broke away from uh, the what, what then was considered like the, the heartbeat of the conservative movement so they could be a little bit more anti-white. I mean, can you imagine that? <laughs> to go from Con Inc. and to say, mm, we think just a dash more of anti-whiteism will make it all better. The neo-confederates of the Heritage Foundation said, quote, it violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. It violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. In their, in their best nerd voices with uh, tape running around the middle of their glasses. Uh, of the Civil Rights Act of the Equal Protection Clause. A headline in the official digital outlet of white nationalism asks, quote, aren't we better than Minneapolis? Teachers unions fire whites on first policy? Are we better than that? No, no. You see, Harriet, you're, and remember, Harriet is actually a large non-white man who looks like he was potentially the member of the Black Panther movement in the 1960s. So it's going to clash in your head a little bit, but just follow. Just follow. Uh, they are referring to the newest issue uh, in the white outrage industrial complex. Re any white person complain. Any white person say, and, and how are they complaining here? It's a violation of Title VII. Are we better than this? I mean, this is this is conservative ink for you. This is con ink for you. Not the rank and file, good folks, as we hit the bottom of the first hour here in service to white well-being. Going free today, and it's a glorious day, let me tell you. We're taking back our destiny one piece at a time every day, even when, even when we have the headwind of the anti-white monsters ahead of us, and then all the minas bubbling around like burnt popcorn trying to pull us back down into their mire. It's not happening. We're not going to let you do that. Scum. So here you have this guy, and it's a great example. All you have to do is say something is, are we better than that? And it's a, a white outrage in industrial complex. <laughs> a contract between Minneapolis public schools. And, and he says this. This is the outrage, the, the white outrage industrial complex. And I have not read this yet, but you know very well he's going to be complaining about the Minneapolis because don't you, that's an ancient uh, Aryan word uh, because it's just, so you can look back and see with all of this, the white people are just so evil. Uh, public schools and the Minneapolis uh, Federation of Teachers, the conservative media has latched on to the plan as yet another example of the rising oppression of Caucasian America. According to the collectively uh, bargained agreement, agreements detractors, uh, MPS will target, wow, MPS, Minneapolis Public Schools. That's funny. They're MPs. <laughs> MPS will target white teachers for layoffs to solve for past discrimination. Now, we're going to be covering in the next segment of this gathering, so don't go anywhere. We're going to be digging into the Go Free method, and you're going to learn about how to handle when they're talking about this collective responsibility, Bravo Sierra. All right? So don't go anywhere. According to the collectively bargained agreement detractors, past discrimination. That's why they're doing it. That's why they're going to fire all the white teachers first. At least, so says the Grio. Somehow, people who lack critical thinking skills and uh, seasoning experience can be beguiled into believing a contract that was collectively bargained by a majority white coalition is anti-white. Somehow they can be. So how many, and this whole thing, you all know who are implementing the go-free method. Please tell those who are new whether they're with us now or they'll be with us later uh, in replay, if not later in the gathering, that you have already heard several meme pathogens that in our story, as you would address it, you would crush. You would absolutely crush. You would be the moral actor. This guy would look totally immoral. You would win the day and walk away with your chin high and uh, white, white women uh, would... would pull their clothes off and throw flowers at you, and, and children would run up for your autographs. Uh, if you stay inside of the anti-white narrative, uh, then you will discover that you don't have a response to anything that he's saying, nothing that can succeed, nothing that will make you moral, uh, nothing that will recapture our destiny. Perhaps they are willing to ignore past discrimination part of the story. Maybe the outraged victims of this brand new act of reverse racism, what idiots that, that use that, don't care that this contract is four months old. However, okay, so if white people are involved, what this guy's saying, if a white person wants it, then it can't be anti-white. Can you, if you're going free, can you defeat that argument? Of course you can. So if white, if white people are there, then it can't be anti-white, is, is what he's saying. Then he's saying, well, it's, it's, it's been in place for four months. Therefore, as though anti-whites don't take on and white race and destroy everything that we do, irrespective of how long it has been in place and how legitimate it is, et cetera. But this has been four months, so therefore it can't be undone. You remember I told you all the conversation I had with the barista at Starbucks? We were talking about the living constitution, and it can be changed, and it should be able to be changed easily. And I said, well, it can be changed, but it's hard to change. And he said, no, it should be changed easily. It's living. It's alive. We should be able to change it. And I said, okay, well, what happens when we get it to the place you want it to be? And it says this. And I stated something, otherwise, I said, no, we're going to take it away. He said, you can't do that. Oh, okay. I got it now. I figured it out. You lying POS. Once you get what you want, once you have the anti whiteism you want, then it becomes stone and can never be changed. But until it's stone, but until you have what you want and it becomes stone, it's living, it's mine, and therefore you can destroy it. Harriet goes on. However, there's a bigger issue with the conservative narrative that should be included in the current conversation. Of course, would you also say anything as stupid as reverse racism? My gosh, I was actually a child telling adults not to talk, not to use that. That's how long ago I figured that one out. Firing white teachers, writes Harriet, I'm not joking, is actually a great idea. Allow me to explain. First of all, why are teachers being laid off? Don't we need more teachers? Well, aside from the idea that most people believe we need more teachers, the American education system also has a long-standing policy that we should pay teachers. Oh, how witty of him. Only by half. And because most teachers prefer to be paid with money, wow, who does he think he's impressing with these, like, little half quips? Kindergartners? A lack of school funding prevents Minneapolis public schools from paying all of its teachers. Oh, then why would Minneapolis be running out of money for their public schools? Before I read any further, and I'll say again, I didn't read this. Who took a look at this with her with her supersonic abilities and then told me this would be a good one for you to look over? Who who could look at an entire article and, and in a matter of less than a, a minute know the entire thing and then say this would be a good one? It wasn't me. 
She also said, unfortunately, uh, before she actually began thinking about this and breaking it down with the go free method, you can argue with this guy. And I said, oh, yes, yes, you can. You can. Why can't MPS afford to pay its teachers? I'm going to go ahead and guess. That is because they, with their anti-white policies of victimizing Western kind, fleecing us for the dollars that we work hard to acquire, the middle class, it's not the wealthy, they're out of dodge a long time ago. It's the middle class of white people who are the avatar for all that is uh, seen as worthy of jealousy and envy by anti-whites of all races, white and non-white. They fleece us, they rob us, we are dehumanized, we're victimized when we are around, we're, we're raped, we're murdered, we're robbed, our stores are set afire, we're robbed from our stores. And then the anti-whites in government say, it's okay for them to rob you at your store. You deserve it. You deserve to be punished. The only time that people care, the only time that people care about the laws that victimize like white shop owners is when the shop owner is no longer white because they've been driven out of business and it's now a Korean person. And then he fights back and stabs the other non-white person who's attacking them. And then the law applied to him. And then people say, wait a second, that was meant for white shop owners. Release him from prison immediately. He was merely defending himself. So the white population begins leaving Minneapolis. At the same time that this is happening to the white working population in Minneapolis and all the businesses there, they're saying in the schools, why doesn't everybody, every group of kids have the exact same scores? Well, and then they begin implementing all these anti-white strategies until eventually they just said, well, we got to just lower standards down to zero so that everybody can have the same source. In the process of implementing these standards, what have they done? One of the main things they do, they always do, is she was joking when she said that. She was joking. <laughs> I should have said that. One of the main things they do is they fund and fund and put more funds on top of funds that are already there. They need more money. Look at the white kids' schools. Look out in suburbia where the white people have all moved, which is not really white anymore, is it? Look out into these areas where the white people have all moved and look how clean the school is. Look how nice, look how orderly it is. Look how the kids walk in lines. Look how everybody, look there's like a, there's like a couple fights at the high school the whole year over. And the kids in the middle of the fight, when one gets knocked down, the, uh, the, the, the kid who knocked the other one down is like, okay, are you done? And the white kids that are watching are like, no, you're not gonna be allowed to just stomp on his skull or anything if you wanted to even think about it. And they look out there and they say, well, look at that. Well, clearly these inner city schools need more and more money. And then in the end, we discover they have like five times the amount of money per student as those clean, uh, safe schools out in the suburbs. And then they suddenly drop, it just disappears the argument of, of why so much money is disappearing down the toilet. Like the good land success, are you still on the terms with Mark Collett? Of course, I was, uh, I'm on the show every week. Thank you for asking. School funding is typically predicated on the number of students enrolled. No, no, I just got done saying uh, what ends up happening with how many, how many dollars per student in, in America. While the average school spends 13,000 per student, Minneapolis public schools spend 21,000. So you see, so you see, according to the National Education of Education Statistics, but MPS has one of the highest de uh, declines in enrollment in the country. And because most unions make it very difficult to fire workers, the number of teachers stayed the same while the amount of money that paid teachers' salaries decreased. The shortfall necessitated low salaries, budget cuts, and school closures. So what's ultimately happening in all of these inner cities, in my opinion, is that they're going belly up, the schooling systems. They're going belly up because uh, they have increased the amount of money, the amount of dollars per student, to the point that they can't fund it anymore. They can't, they, they, the teachers that they have are garbage uh, because they've been hiring them not on the basis of their competence, but on the basis of their race and sex. And uh, therefore, it just comes down to uh, all white males are excluded. Uh, and uh, and uh, at the same time, the money continues to pour in, the grades continue to get worse, and the dropouts continue to get worse. And before you know it, uh, these school districts will be defunct. They'll be defunct. And then who are they going to blame? It's a tough one. It's a tough one. It got so bad that the MBS had an 86 million budget deficit. Oh, wow. So they're already defunct. Uh, and was expected to become insolvent by 2024. No, you should have already been insolvent. Where are they taking the money from to pay for your garbage? Those garbage outcomes. You know, once again, I said before, like when I talk about the, the schools here in the district, Washington, D.C., I would be the best thing that would ever happen there. If I were put in charge of one of those schools, the kids that graduated, would have earned the, the degree, would have, would have earned the diploma rather that they received. They would be competent to go on to the next stage in their life. Now, a lot of them would have their asses thrown right out, maybe thrown right into jail if they weren't going to play along, if they weren't going to do what was best for themselves. And you know what I'm talking about here in Washington, D.C., where the schools are so tough that uh, the school newspaper has an obituary section. The Minneapolis Federation of Teachers says that the district has more than enough money in its reserves to solve the problem. However, the district says that its rules won't allow the district to tap into these resources. So in March 2022, the teachers union went on strike for three weeks. There's a problem, a big problem in America with uh, the teachers, the teachers unions. First of all, it's obviously all anti-white is all hell. Everybody, all of the, these unions need to be broke, broken up. I tell you, we'll maybe we'll talk about it on Jason Goes Political uh, one of these days. Uh, the teachers unions need to be destroyed and uh, all of the anti-whites who have harmed children are punished uh, in, in, in courts of law for victimizing white children. So in March 2022, teachers union on strike. The district couldn't just close schools, so they had to pay more teachers, which reportedly exacerbated the district's dire financial situation. So here you have this Harriet, uh, who definitely looks like a member of the Black Panthers from the 1960s, who is now complaining about the outcomes of anti-white policies and blaming you for it. Does it ever end? Do you want to do like the Heritage Foundation and say, it's a violation of Title VII, civil rights, act. can we be better than this? Do you want to do that? Or do you want to get out of their anti-white narrative and do something that works? What's it going to be? Because this is the vicious cycle. You can stay on this vicious cycle that I've observed for the totality of my life and been trying to help people get out of, or you can get onto our virtuous cycle where things get better and better, where you get better and better over the course of your life, where you defeat more and more anti-whites. When MPS received 175 million in federal COVID relief funds. Ah, so now exactly as we said, I had, I have not read this. Exactly as we said here, that this is what they were doing with the COVID funds. Every time the anti-whites in the state and federal governments say there's some kind of emergency, we need a bunch of money. The, the thing that they're saying is the emergency isn't the emergency. The emergency is that their anti-white policies have bankrupted another aspect of government and they need to rob some more Peters over here to pay off Paul's over there. Every single time. We, no, people are just never going to learn until, I don't know, until we get angry enough, until we get loud enough, until we metaphorically get in enough faces. So they looked around the country and they said, okay, where have our anti-white policies really ruined shit? And you know what the anti-whites don't want? They don't want a scenario where what they've done is, is ruined, plus is nearly impossible to blame white people for. That's what they don't want to have happen. So they keep shoveling the dollars. Who's paying that 175 million? Who's paying that 175 million in COVID relief funds? Who? They printed up all that money and they shipped it out. Did you think that was the government paying for it? 87,000 IRS agents are coming for you to pay for it. That's who's paying for it. They assume the budget problem was fixed. 
but the district used most of the COVID funds to defray the costs incurred by the strike. So more anti-whiteism. On March 25, the, the two sides reached a tentative agreement that included layoffs for excess teachers, for excess teachers, excess teachers. I mean, where, where, do, they, where do they keep them? Like in a bullpen out back? Where were the excess teachers? I, I'm seriously, they genuinely want, want to know. I mean, the, the classrooms have a teacher in them. Do they not? Does anybody know this? Does anybody know this? The teachers have, a, uh, the classrooms have a teacher. So does anybody know where the excess teachers are? I'm going to go ahead and guess they're at home. I'm going to go ahead and guess that there are a lot of uh, teachers who were hired because they were not white males in Minneapolis and a great many other cities across the United States and the West that are getting paid while at home. That's my guess. That's my opinion. I don't know for sure because I don't know where else you store excess teachers like cordwood in the, in the, in the, in the fields uh, shed, the gaming field shed out on the property at the school. Where do you store the excess teachers? While providing, quote, protections for educators of color. What is this? Uh, a tentative agreement that included layoffs for excess teachers. Okay, here we go. Layoffs for excess teachers while providing, quote, protections for educators of color. Remember, you never allow an anti-white to say people of color or educator of color. I've, I've seen this used, and perhaps you all have seen it used, the, the people of color in various ways. Maybe you can share the most creative way that you've heard it used. Uh, but you have this uh, educators of color. You immediately interrupt an anti-white and say, don't you dare use that anti-white pathogen on me. Don't you dare use this slander, this anti-white slander on me, excluding my people from humanity. You mean uh, protections for non-whites. And, and ultimately, you just mean that you're going to be victimizing white people. So my guess is that they have a bunch of educators who are, and I'm going to put quotes in educators, who were hired because they were not white males and they don't have classrooms for them. And so that's why they're called excess teachers. And uh, what they're going to do is they're going to bring these bullpen excess teachers out of the bullpen, out of their living rooms, out of their homes, and they're going to make them go to work. But they need a classroom to be in, don't they? Well, where can we find classrooms for them in Minneapolis? There's a classroom with a white teacher. There's another one with a white teacher. Let's kick them white ones out. Now we can reduce the budget. Now we can reduce how much we have to pay for teachers. No, we're not going to get rid of the teachers who were hired because they were not white males to stay at home. Another form of welfare, just like almost every federal government job. Have you been anywhere in Washington, D.C. lately? I mean, it is, it is really, uh, I mean, George Washington is absolutely spinning in his grave to, to name that city after him. So this is how they're going to handle the budget issue. I mean, think of the recklessness. Think of how corrupt a, a city has to be, an educational system has to be, to hire people that they don't need as another form of welfare. We're just going to, oh, you got your teachers, your useless teacher degree, which means you're rapidly anti-white, but you are shit as a teacher. So we're going to keep, we're going to not kick these white teachers out of their classrooms just yet. We're just going to let you stay home. We'll let you come into work every now and again, and you can just hang out uh, you know, in the office with the staff there. And then you're going to remedy this irresponsible hiring practice by firing the only people that are doing any good on the basis of race. Their opinion, not mine. I'm not looking at the, uh, I'm not in the classrooms and examining and studying uh, the teachers and what's, which teachers are doing good and which teachers are doing poor. <laughs> in essence, teachers will be laid off in order of seniority unless they are protected by provisions that include, among other things, educators in, quote, racially isolated schools with the greatest concentrations of poverty. Okay, so racially isolated, I've heard that one before, a mean pathogen. And then poverty is always used. It's another mean pathogen. It, these, poverty is a euphemism for non-white people when they want to victimize white people. Racially isolated group, it's like marginalized group, frontline group, all of these things. Never use any of those terms. They put you in the anti-white narrative where you are always victimized. Do you follow me? Members of, uh, number two, members of underrepresented populations among the district's licensed teachers. Another thing, underrepresented population. Everywhere you look, everywhere, and this is how, this is how the anti-whites play. Or is it really underrepresented? So in other words, uh, black people, for example, are 12% to 13% of the, of the country. Are black people, are there fewer than 12 to 13% in the school district? Well, then they would say, oh, well, no, well, there are more blacks in the city. Well, okay, well, then let's look at how many, how many percent. And if it ends up being that there are still more blacks than that, They'll then abandon that argument and head right to another one where they can continue victimizing white people. This anti-whites, these are the villains that you deal with. These are the monsters and, and you have to know at what level you have to play the game to win the game. Because if you continue to go around with these Queensberry rules against predator, villainous predators like this, miscreants like this, you have any hope in hell. And then number three, alumni of HBCUs, uh, tribal colleges or Hispanic Association of College and University. Okay, so what is it I always say? Once again, Jason is right. They always start off with the group, black race, that has been shoved in your face, white people, your whole life, your parents' whole lives, great-grandparents' whole lives, shoved in your face as the most victimized group of all human history of all time. We have to bend over backwards. White guilt, white guilt, white guilt you. Bend over backwards all the way until we snap your back in several places because of how much they've been victimized. Don't you feel the white guilt? You got to do it. Well, okay, I guess I'll lower my guard. Oh, yeah, and then all the rest of the non-white races too, so few white race. That happens every single time. And what happens with these conservative loser content creators? They just go about business as no, they just say, well, you know, it's just, it's, it's for this very victimized, they just go along with the anti-white narrative. It's for this very victimized group, which is why I asked people, I sh there was a video uh, that uh, was out on Twitter and I shared it. And I asked you to look at my Twitter to find this video. It's by some weird group I've never heard of before. I think it was Charlie Kirk. She actually shared this video. It was like, wow, this, this, this commercial is on point or whatever he said, or it was off the hook or whatever. And it was, it was like 90% videos of black people committing uh, crimes as though black people were the only people that commit crimes or that black, you know, on and on. And no one could see, I didn't see a single comment of anybody seeing the obvious bear sized trap to cut your fucking head off if you fall for that. In fact, I saw white people in the white sympathetic sphere saying, well, I don't see anything wrong. It shows me the people committing the crime. Shut up. Stop thinking. You, you have absolutely lost your right to give an opinion on what's happening to us because you're too midwit to give an opinion. You can't see the gleaming teeth of the anti-white argument there and what it ends up doing to us. God almighty. We have a population of absolute, I'm talking about the white race, of turds that can't identify genuine leadership right in front of them. This is, this is that movie. This is that the, the Jared George uh, and, and uh, Lilla Pase were talking about, idiocracy. It's not the non-white races. It's the white race that are the idiots. 
It's the white race that'll be going along uh, saying, oh, no, I, I've got to, well, let me just, let me take a look at, I've looked at it now for 20 seconds. I have a plan. Shut up. So I ask people, if you want me to review it? If you want me to review it, I'll review it and I'll tell everybody how wrong they are. That are saying, I don't see anything wrong with this. You failed your IQ test, Johnny. So here we have your, again, once again, I'm right. That seems like the definition of reverse racism. These are the bold, like he's talking for you. This is the argument that you would make. Sorry, Harriet. Sorry, Harriet. Back into, you know, your, uh, your old folks home or whatever after your 1960s Black Panther power uh, endeavors. That's not my argument. This sounds like reverse racism to me. Why would they agree? And the same, the same people, by the way, by the way, I just want to get a little fired up here. Just, just, you, just have to, you just have to put up with it. The same folks who now make arguments like I was just talking about made arguments against me for year after year after year when, when the internet was very young. And I'm arguing on, on these different blogs about don't use reverse racism. Don't say it. Here are all the reasons why it's harmful. Here are all the reasons why this alternative of anti-white, anti-whitism are strong, are better. And all these people, no, Jason, no. Racism can go both ways. You're just wrong about it all along. And now finally, finally, after years and years and years, it's finally, it's finally beginning to work its way out of the white sympathetic sphere uh, with, with a heavy influence from yours truly to get rid of this stupidity. And then these people act like they never said that. We never said that. You didn't do anything, Jason. Now we're just going to say that this commercial with the giant gleaming bear trap teeth aimed not just at taking off a, a foot, but this bear trap is so big, it's going to pop your head off. When that thing closes, it takes the head right off. As though that's going to change anything in your IQ. You're so stupid. That seems like the definition of reverse racism. Why? Or why would they agree to that? And then here comes Harry. He's going to tell you why. Well, first, you need to know a few hard facts. According to almost every study, black and non-white students have better educational, emotional, and behavioral outcomes in classrooms with same race teachers. Can we have that same argument for our children? Here is something that Ladybug did mention to me, and I pointed out right away. This guy makes an argument that detonates. Maybe I should hold it until it comes. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Just remember, these are the reasons why he's, that he's giving as we hit the top of the hour. In Minneapolis public schools, black and Hispanic students are more likely to be disciplined and less likely to graduate. Now, remember, these are the arguments why they have to get rid of white teachers, why they have to victimize white people. Now, don't, don't feel terribly bad for these white teachers. These people are going to be anti-white as all hell. Uh, victimizing the white race on the basis of race is something that you have to get fired up about. It's something that uh, people who are focused on hating other groups of mankind, they don't care about white people getting fired on the basis of race. They just like to be able to have something to cite so that they can say, and that's why we hate them over there. So these are the reasons why. So you just, if you're in a conversation with Harriet here, you want to stop him and say, okay, so I want to, I just want to point out that you are now going to give me the reasons why we are going to victimize white people on the basis of race, the teachers, and victimize the white pupils at these schools, the white students. So tell, good, please do tell me, Harriet, why we should victimize the white children and these white educators who got their education. They, they probably have loans that they have to pay off. They probably have families. We want to know why. So it'd be a victimization of their families as well. Please, please give us the reasons why. I want to hear them. You do not let him stay in the anti-white narrative. You do not let him stay in the anti-white narrative where he will say and be able to make the argument that this is moral because it does good for this other, these other groups over here. Minneapolis public students are 37% white. 34, no, so don't take the bait. Don't take the bait and say, well, the reason they're disciplined is Right? The reason a black and Hispanic students are disciplined is because I have all the, I'm armed with all the facts from American Renaissance. I've got all their crime stats. Don't fall for the bait. Minneapolis public school students are 37% white. 34, that's a lot of white kids that you're going to victimize by taking away teachers that they would learn best with. White ones. Of course, we don't want those white kids with anti-white white teachers. I personally would much rather have a black, white, sympathetic, white positive teacher who is opposed to anti-whiteism in a classroom full of white kids. Much more would have that than a white anti-white teacher every day of the week. I mean, good God in heaven. I had, I, I just got to point out, I had, there were very few people when I was in uh, junior high school, when I stood out up and against anti-whiteism, there, there was no one, there, were, there was no one, you know, you, if you read the book, you know that there were a few white teachers that very privately, so read the book and you'll find out, that very privately, because they were worried about their jobs. There was one uh, black, uh, one black guy, old black guy, who I went in, I, I came in school and uh, I had a, not only did I have, it was, uh, what was it, it was like Lee Jackson Day or something. And I brought, not only did I have my jacket with the flag on it, Pardon me, I brought another one with me, very proud, Confederate flag. And all these kids looked at this teacher like, what's he going to do? Is he going to kick Jason out or what's he going to do? I mean, of course, I had a jacket anyhow. And that guy said, he was kind of like, he kind of like a high-pitched voice. And he's like, that's a part of history. I'm not going to. He didn't, and he didn't slander uh, me or, or white people either. So would you rather have him or would you rather have anti-white, white, white uh, woman up in front of the classroom telling you how evil the white race is? Minneapolis public school students are 37% white, 34% black, 17% Hispanic. The staff of MPS is 66% white, 70.9% black, 6.4% Hispanic. Well, since you already have these anti-white policies in place, what is going on that you ended up, is it because there is a dearth of black and Hispanic educators? Is it because there just aren't many applying? I mean, interesting in these things to, to dig in. Do you have, a, uh, do you have a, a, uh, a problem with certain teachers from certain groups so that you hire them to be at home? Are these stats even accurate? Is this about, when he says, when he says here 66% white, is he talking about all teachers, all teachers and staffs and supporting staffs, uh, including janitors? And I mean, what's he talking about here? The district and the teachers union acknowledge, quote, past discrimination by the district disproportionately impacted the hiring of underserved teachers in the district. Is it because they, they pay garbage and that they can't get these other communities to come teach? Underrepresented teachers, so they, they recognize, quote, past discrimination by the district disproportionately impacted the hiring of underrepresented teachers in the district as compared to the relevant labor market and the community as compared to. Here's where you get to get into the, the, uh, the tricky uh, and the magical math that anti-whites are going to do and resulted in a lack of diversity of teachers. So there you have it again. Diversity means non-white. How many times do I have to make sure that every conservative family member knows? 
I, I've had the argument so many times in my life uh, where you have these conservatives, patriots, nationalists, and they're good people, but they'll tell you, no, diversity doesn't mean no white people. Really, bitch? Really? Because when you read what anti-rights really write, when they say there's a lack of diversity, they're saying there is too many white people. They're calling non-white people. You can just read exactly here the point he makes. They're saying white people are not the diversity. Non-white people are the diversity. Therefore, diversity is another word for non-white people. As you can see, for most of its existence, the district's hiring policy not only favored white teachers, and what horseshit. How long have they been in charge? How long have radical anti-whites been in charge of uh, the, this district in Minneapolis? I would argue for long before these white teachers were even there. That's what I would argue. How did these white teachers get in there? Because they were radically anti-white and they had passed all of their, uh, they'd gone through their schooling, they got their teacher's licenses, they were coming to work every day, or at least mostly. That's how they got in there. This is not, and that's another thing about these anti-whites, and this is what Harriet is doing right here. They act like uh, their fictional anti-white world that they always browbeat us with, where, where white people just chased non-white people around the streets with chainsaws. That that was like last week. Yeah, now, now we're gonna fire all white people. But last week, boy, you all were on top of things. Poor shit. You all been running the Minneapolis district uh, and city for a long, a very long time. A very long time. So if you got uh, too many white people, it's anti-white white people that you've been hiring because they got their test scores, they passed and got their license, and they come to work. That's why. You, you might be admitting something here about other communities by having so many anti-white white people at your educational establishments. But for some reason, Fox News pundits and right-wing propagandists don't seem interested in this part of the story. Okay, maybe the teachers discriminated in the past. Again, anti-whites always want to distract you from the, from the present with the past because the present is radically anti-white every time. But going forward, shouldn't they just fire the worst teachers? So this is the argument he's putting in your mouth. And trust me, you don't want him putting anything in your mouth. He's anti-white as all hell. But this is the argument he's putting in your mouth. Maybe the teachers discriminated in the past, but going forward, shouldn't they just fire the worst teachers? That's a great point, he says, uh, that most people wouldn't argue with. Now, here's a question. Why do you assume? Now, you have to follow this, the, the thinking here. He says, why do you assume the white teachers aren't the worst teachers? No one assumed that was the case. No one who would pose, no white person out there who would say, why don't they just fire the worst teachers by whatever metric is irrespective of race? No one saying that is thinking in their mind, ah, that'll get rid of the non-white ones. No one is thinking that, but he is. So what does that, what did he just reveal about his own sentiments about what teachers are good and what teachers are not good at the school? He also, I'm gonna go ahead and say now, I don't know how much longer we're gonna go, but he also says here and saying, he said at some point, he says that this will be good. The diversity, more non-whites will be good for the white kids. But his own argument is detonated by himself because moments ago, we just read that student, non-white students learn best with teachers that are of the same race. So how are white kids going to be bettered by getting rid of the white teachers that they would learn best with because they are the same race? They are not. His own argument reveals him to be a liar. I would say the anti-whites are not bringing their best to the game of intelligence anymore. I would say that it's, it's really gotten dumbed down at this point. Most of the MPS's students are non-white. Most of his teachers are white. According to the district's own data, most of the non-white students are lagging behind white students. And according to people who know things, students of color do, but he's reiterating it. I mean, how dumb? How can he say these things side by side? Students, uh, and according to people who know, did he actually just say that's people who know things? He did say that, Ladybug, you're right. According to people who know things. <laughs> Imagine that type of just uh, citation. To when you are able, when you are able to adduce something as profound as people who know things, you know you've made it to the top. You know that intellectually, uh, you are insurmountable. According to people who know things. I mean, that's even, that's even higher than, you know, you have like, you have down here, you have according to scientists, right? And then for some groups of people, you have according to researchers. And then you have like for some others, according to God. And then for finally, the peak of the mountain, people who know things. We need music to come in right there. Dun, dun, dun. According to people who know things, students of color do better when they are taught by educators of color. So I'm not assuming that the white teachers are the worst teachers, he says. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that most of the teachers are less equipped to teach most of the students. So it doesn't matter how well you teach. White teachers, get a grip. It doesn't matter how anti-white you are. Thank God. Thank God. It doesn't matter how well you teach. It doesn't matter if you have a non-white spouse. It doesn't matter if you produce non-white children. None of that matters. It doesn't matter if you have a whole lifetime of victimizing the white race. It doesn't matter if you have a whole lifetime of white lighting and marring your flesh and abusing yourself with calories and abusing yourself with, uh, with these unending purchases of handbags and uh, over-the-counter drugs, whatever it is. Whatever you're abusing yourself with, it doesn't matter. If you're white, you are underserving them. And therefore, you have to go. If you are going to fire the teachers, why not use fact-based, peer-reviewed information? Question mark. There is no segment in the entirety of the American social construct. The American social construct? We're going to have to jump off of this story soon. But American so no, there is America is, is created by white people. It's not a social construct. America was, Western, was created by white people. There is no such thing as the American social construct. What we have now is an anti-white inferno. Okay, the American social construct where ignoring factual information is regarded as wrong. Using racial data seems to be okay when it doesn't affect, he said okay, like the capital O and the capital K. Educators. When it doesn't affect people who like uh, guitar solos. Black people are more likely to be arrested for illegal drugs, even though white, okay, so here comes like the, the totally inappropriate, uh, like I read somewhere once anti-white arguments and like personal anecdote garbage. If I had an argument with an anti-white or two, can you tell? Black people are more likely to be arrested for illegal drugs, he says, uh, even though white people are more likely to use and distribute them. Which, right, should we just accept that on its face? Should we just accept that on its face? I mean, just absolute nonsense. Throw another personal anecdote at somebody, at an anti-white like that. D don't, don't fall for their trap of getting into uh, why this might be or, and accepting his, his premise or premises. Just throw another anecdote at him. The U.S. Supreme Court said racial profiling is constitutional and agreed that law enforcement officers can ask Spanish speakers to show their immigration papers. But when it comes to whiteness, it must be protected. Okay, so there you have it. 
You know what's going to end up happening? The anti-whites created this concept, whiteness. It's, now, that is a construct. It's part of the anti-white uh, lexicon. It's part of their locutions. It's meant to undermine and destroy Western kind. And I have been arguing for many, many years never to use this. And now so many of our champions here in, in service to white well-being going for implementing the go-free method are using it and succeeding and, and combating uh, this whiteness and uh, telling folks, hey, advising them, don't say whiteness. That's an anti-white locution. It means that white people don't exist, that white people are evil, and whiteness also means oppression. The anti-whites totally own that construct. When you say that what we do is whiteness, you are a goddamn idiot. I mean, a decade of telling people not to use this. I can, I, I can be forgiven for getting to the point where I say that you're a goddamn idiot if you continue to say it. All right? You don't, have to, you don't have to obey me. I don't have any power over you. You can make a contradictory argument. You can say it makes perfect sense to say that we produce whiteness, uh, even though it is a gigantic anti-white trap for us to do so. You can do that. The reason you get mad when I say not to say something or to say something else is because you know I'm right. And that, that conflict of being persuaded, that conflict of being persuaded versus what you want to stick with is what makes you angry. Here we go with the profiling to racial profiling. It's called probability, you dumb SOB. It's called probability. It's mathematics. If you are as good, as good at mathematics as you are with writing, then I understand why you don't understand. Will this make the Minneapolis public schools better? Question mark. That's your question that he put in your mouth to ask him. And get this response. He just told you throughout all of this article, 100%. He is averring that this is the case. It, you have to have non-white teachers for non-white people. Same race. You gotta get, and all of these were pretexts to victimize the white race, both the teachers and the pupils. By the way, is anybody else? I, I'm asking, I'm seriously asking you. When I ask questions, it's not for the of it. You, know, you can participate in what I'm actually saying. I, I am an educator. I, I am your educator. I am your priest. I am your doctor. I am your psychologist. I am all of that. I am your king and emperor for those people who get all been out of shape about it. And yeah, I can do that with my head as well. He has gone through this saying it is apodictic. It is apodictic that white teach. Oh, I just want to make that point. I'll say this. White teachers need to be fired for these reasons and that things will be better. Right? But as a side thought, parallel thought, you can do this with me. I'm not the only one in the world who can carry several lines of thinking side by side at the same time. Who else out there when talking about Minneapolis has said a single word about the white kids there? Only white positivists are going to care about the white kids because we care about our brothers and sisters. We're not hating on some other race on the basis of the way they were born. Like, like, me nots and some others out there. But this guy has said it is apodictic. The non-white students are being suspended, are getting in trouble more because white teachers. The non-white students are falling behind scholastically because of white teachers. The non-white students would do better scholastically with non-white teachers. On and on, he has said this. Now, here at the end of this article, he says, for you, will this make the Minneapolis public schools better? His response, one word, maybe. Talk about equivocation. Typical of anti-whites and anti-whiteism. I have just articulated, says the anti-white, how you must be victimized to the nth degree. I know he's not gonna understand, it's a math term. To the nth degree. I have just articulated how you must be victimized to the nth degree. Will it make things better? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to be held responsible, but probably the, 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 the reality is he knows it's not going to get better. It's just going to victimize what? White people. He knows. Why is it that he's not sure? What was he sure of? Let me get, let me crawl into his head. And boy, it is dank and empty in here for all of you so that I can show you what Harriet was sure of all along. What was he sure of in this entire article? That white people could be victimized this way and that they must be victimized this way, both the teachers and the students. But he gave me a bunch of pretexts about how it's going to be better for non whites. Oh, he's not sure about that at all because when he puts that question in your mouth, his answer is maybe. I did, I did like fifth dimensional circles around this guy just now. I'll show you all one of these days. Uh, maybe I'll do it today. Maybe I'll do it today. For those, who, for those of you who are here and lucky, I'll do it today maybe. But if not today, we'll do it another day. A scan of my brain. And then what I did with the scan of my brain is I put, it si I put a, a smaller version of another scan uh, inset with my scan. So it was a typical scan. I'm not going to say. Uh, and then it was my scan. And you can see, it's kind of like a big difference. Maybe, he says, well, what could possibly be worse than majority of MPS students not being proficient in math and reading? What's financially worse? Uh, then total insolvency? What's less equitable than total finance? And there you have the anti-white slur that is, is super versatile and very dangerous because the word, the word equitable can be used anywhere to mean anything to justify any anti-whiteism. Equity. Uh, then uh, what's less equitable than total financial, educational, and, and inequality? What's less equitable than total financial, educational, and inequality? Okay, this is kind of rough. Uh, but so relative to who? Now do you see how we changed the, the, the relativity to make his point? So he was first, earlier in this article, he was making relativity arguments within the city. And then actually, he also made a relativity argument, I could, I'm not I'm trying to go back, I believe, where he was saying relative to outside, and now he's doing it again, relative to outside of the city. How equitable is it if the schools in Minneapolis go out of business? If they go out of business, it's your fault, and they should go out of business. I mean, here's how Western civilization has worked. White people built Western civilization. We built a school. And then we said to non-white people, hey, you can come in. Here is a, we'll build you your own school. And then anti said, no, that's not fair. You got to give us your school as well. You got you to bring everybody into the same school. Well, okay. They come into this at, at Bayonet and Gunpoint in the U.S. And I think Australia too, didn't they? Force, lethal force. They did that. And now they say, oh, well, the schools that we, your schools that we have been put in charge of, we have now caused to go bankrupt and are violent hell holes. And so how fair is it that you still have schools out there that aren't like this? Uh, you did it to your school, dumbass. And now you should suffer the repercussions. You, you to hell. And you're wanting more of our dollars because it's not fair what you do to your environment. Because you sh eat and shit in the same place. Doesn't mean I should have to clean that up. So sick and tired of this. Anti-whites, bane, bane of the world's existence. 
Minneapolis public schools are terrible schools and they don't serve the public. Oh, well, who made them that way? The school district is essentially Donald Trump racist. Boy, this is a new, <laughs> it's not just the anti-white slur racist, but it's Donald Trump racist. Boy, that's big, right? Bloated and bad at business. Bloated and bad. Actually, he, he became, he was a uh, millionaire and became a billionaire. So he didn't start off with nothing by no means. I mean, the dad gave him millions. But if you understand the difference between millions and billion, then you're smart enough to know how far he went. But this guy, Harriet, not so much. Bad, he's bad at business. Okay. How well have you done, Harriet? Uh, but you said firing white teachers will make the schools more equitable. Yes, it will. So there it is right here in the same argument, just as I told you, I foreshadowed, where I said he's going to say it's going to be better for the white kids after in the midst of his own argument saying that it's going to be worse for the white kids. How did he say it's going to be worse for the white kids? They're going to get rid of their white teachers. Well, how does that work worse for the white kids? He made the argument that blacks have to have black teachers to do better. That students do better when they're teachers of their own race. According to black teachers in the district, their concerns have largely been ignored by the teacher bullshit. Their concerns have been ignored by the teachers union and the school board until recently. What a load of horseshit that is. Their concerns have been ignored. <laughs> they're, they're anti you want to stay in their anti-white narrative any longer? Or do you want to come over? Let's see, what does this guy end with? I'm done with him. Or look at this guy. Look at this guy. Got a nice silk shirt on, looks like. Gray in the beard. Anyone who advocates for economic equity, there it is, anti-whiteism galore, must also advocate for the redistribution of resources. That's how diversity, equity, and inclusion work. I, I want to read these first two lines again. Anyone who advocates for economic equity. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to the white anti-white teachers and the other white anti-whites who support fervently anti-whiteism. Or maybe I should say fervently, crazily, they support it. And so he's made, if you want these things, then you have to support the redistribution of resources. That means you have to happily get fired. Well, but I, I won't be able to eat. So this is for the anti-white revolution. White devil, says the anti-white. Anyone who advocates for economic equity must also advocate for the redistribution of resources. That's how diversity, equity, and inclusion work. I hope all anti-whites out there, all conservatives, all, you know, we don't get, we don't get a fraction of a, of a billionth of a fraction of a 1% of the attention we should get. Because all of our brothers and sisters need to understand that right there. That this guy's, God bless you, Harriet. God bless you. I never met a bigger Harriet in my life. And uh, I got to say, you're the, you've been the best. You have been the best. Anyone who advocates for economic equity must also advocate for the redistribution of resources. That's how diversity, equity, and inclusion works. You knew that. You knew that, anti-white. That's how it works. And then you have all the Sean Hannity's and all these conservative content creators out there that are saying, what? We want diversity too. We want equity too. Just hear us out. No, hear us out. No, no, you dumb mother. No. If I get to meet him in person, I might, you know, the, the regime, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing but shut down. Nothing but, you know, in a fantasy parallel dimension, I would meet him in person and knock him out with one punch. And then I would be famous. I would spit on him and I would say, you're famous. Now I'm famous too. Not only does it create a more stable environment for everyone, but it actually creates, not only does it create a more stable environment for everyone, for the white children and the white people who will be left, but it actually creates a more realistic world for the people who previously benefited from the inequality. Uh, the benefited from the inequality. Okay. <laughs> who wants to live in a world filled with mediocre people who are bad at their job? He, he actually asks that there. I'm not kidding. And uh, at least at the very end, he and I could find a place to agree.